Good morning, grade three. I welcome you to a new social studies lesson. And this week, we're going to learn about flowcharts. So the learning objective of this lesson is to follow a flowchart and to be able to create one independently. Great, so let's get started. So on this slide, I want you to understand that a flowchart is basically pictures of different separate steps that form a process and it's laid in a sequential order that you need to follow. So you can see that you can solve a problem using a flowchart and you can also represent a scientific method where you put in the steps that you need to follow in order to solve a problem or find a result. Here, these are pages 176 and page 177 from your textbook. So let's read. Now, why does it matter? Why do you need a flowchart? People often need to know how to do something or how something works. A chart that shows the steps in order can help them understand. So let's learn. I'm reading from this and you can too. You can pause this video and read along with me. A flowchart shows how to do something or how something works. It shows the steps in order. The flowchart below uses word pictures and arrows to show the steps to building a car. Cars are put together on assembly lines. On an assembly line, each worker adds one kind of part to a product as it passes on a moving belt. And that's how a car is fixed. So, uh, on the next page, on page 177, we're going to answer some questions using this flowchart. Let's have a closer view. So, Follow the arrows in the flowchart to answer the questions. So we're going to answer these questions based on what we read on this flowchart. So question number one is, what is the next step after the car frame is placed on an assembly line? Question number two is, what happens after the top and sides are added to the frame? And the last question is, when are the engine parts put into the car? Now, what I like doing is that I like reading the questions first and then going through the flowchart or any given text that needs comprehension or understanding, right? So the first question was, what is the next step after the car frame is placed on an assembly line? So first, when I read the question and then I look onto the flowchart, it'll be easier for me to gather information. So let's look at this flowchart. The first a square has a picture and a caption that says the car frame is placed on the assembly line. Now I know that the question, the first question asked me, what's the next step after this step? So the answer is going to be definitely this one. The top and sides of the car are added to the frame. So once the frame of the car is placed on the assembly line, the tops and sides are added to this frame. Then you can see in the blue square that wheels are attached to the car. Question number two was, what happens after the top and sides are added to the frame? And the answer is going to be, wheels are attached to this car now. So once the top and sides are in place, now it's time to attach the wheels. And the last question here is, when are the engine parts put into the car? And that's the last step uh, that we see on this flowchart in the green box that states, engine parts are put into the car after the wheels are attached. So you can see how I can read this flow chart in order to understand the process that takes place when a car is fixed or created on an assembly line. All right, grade three, so now it's time to make it relevant. And here on this slide, I want you to read the instructions first, all right? Let's read it together. Make a list of the things you do every morning to get ready for school. Use your list to make a floor chart that shows the sequence in which you do these things. Draw pictures, label them, and add arrows to show how to read the steps of your chart. Now, you can see there are two floor charts here. The first one's with a green tick. That means that's how you do it. You can always do better than that. And then there's this other one where you will not be able to follow any instructions because there are no clear arrows as to what is the next step that you take. Great, so let's look at these two flowcharts. I want you to pause this slide and go through these to figure out the difference, okay? 
So you're going to make up a flowchart showing your daily routine, how do you get ready for school. And I'm so excited to have you back in the class where you're going to give a presentation about your flowchart. Best of luck, grade three.